Music with no melody is rare. Well, there have been talking blues and things like concertos for drums. But right now, all around us, and so compelling you never miss the fact there's no melody, is a music that is all beat, strong beat, and talk. It's rap music, and it sounds like this. It's about a time not long ago, everybody had on their radio. And then the fella came on with a group in North to put the wiggle in the women and girls and boys. The word got around about... That's the Sugar Hill Gang, whose records have sold millions of copies. The audience for rap music is really growing, and its use has broadened beyond mere entertainment. Here with a report on this new phenomenon is Steve Fox. Steve... Hugh, even though rap music has been discovered by everybody from advertisers to educators to politicians, many people know it because of one of the year's best-selling records. Blondie's Rapture was a hit around the nation, telling a story with music and rhymes in syncopation. It's like it removes the middleman because it could be anybody doing it and it's like direct communication and, and that's what like music is. Music is essentially a beat. Rap is personal. Personal poetry. It's sexy, energetic music. Music from the streets heard on the streets with the advent of portable record and tape players. Rap music began in Harlem and the South Bronx on playgrounds like this one where people would gather to spin records and then recite their own lyrics, their raps, over the instrumental sections. Now, one of those rappers is 22-year-old Curtis Blow. Yeah, come on now. Brakes on the bus, brakes on the car. The Brakes was Curtis Blow's biggest hit, selling 680,000 copies last year and hitting the top of the rhythm and blues sales charts. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Curtis Blow learned how to rap on the streets, he learned how to construct his raps and how to control his crowds as a college student. I learned it in speech. Uh, the greatest orators of all time use crowd response. Somebody scream! Break down! Rising young rappers like Curtis Blow may be the newest stars of pop music, but the origins of rap date back hundreds of years. Went out on the front porch walking Stories in rhyme have traditionally been common among the black poor in the Deep South. In the interaction between black preacher and congregation lies the roots of the call and response form of most rap songs. The scat singing of the jazz greats comes from the same tradition. As does the verbal virtuosity of musical giants like James Brown. Rap's Caribbean counterpart can be found in the reggae rhythms and rhymes of Jamaica. People, what we need to do is to understand each other. The art of rapping was brought to the radio in the 1950s by disc jockeys like Jocko Henderson. He used to say things like, uh, uh, E to the yak. Ho, this is Jock and the back on the scene with the record machine saying good pop do. How do you do? If the boastful poetry of Muhammad Ali is in the rap tradition. Ali swings to the left, Ali swings to the right. Look at the kid carry the fight. As was the civil rights rhetoric of the appropriately named black leader H. Rap Brown. Because if America don't come round, America should be burnt down. Inner city kids learn rhyme talk in their street games. Rap music is a form of self-assertive boasting, a bold, loud statement of individual prowess and adolescent fantasy. You see, I'm six foot one and I'm tons of fun and I dress to a D. You see, I got more clothes than Muhammad Ali and I dress so vicious. This kind of self-advertisement, it seems to be a kind of tall tale and in that sense is a very American sort of thing. But these are very literary in a way, in the way that Mark Twain's short stories were, were full of tall tales. It's always been a part of what's been happening. It's, there's not much, you got to understand, this comes from a culture where you don't have much to begin with. So how well you use words and put them together, that defines how well you can stand up and walk down the street. Rap music may have been around for years, but the first rap music festival was held only recently at this armory in Harlem. Thousands came here to dance and prance, talk and gawk, and rap with the rapper. This is the Mean Machine. A father-son rapping team. 
Wayne and Charlie, America's only all-wood rapper. And the funky four plus one. She's the one. You don't necessarily have to understand the words in order to get into the spirit of rap. You just say, I said, the hip hop, the hip into the hip, hip hop. You don't stop the rap until the bang, bang, boogie, say, I'm chump the boogie. Now, what does it mean? You know, but it hits you a certain way, and that's what it means. Rap music is often heard on city streets blaring from the big boxes, portable radio and tape players. The big boxes are so much a part of the rap scene that Madison Avenue uses rap commercials to sell the boxes. And when those boxes are turned up, many people are turned off. People have traditionally been offended by noise or what they perceive of as noise. People hated rock and roll 15 years ago. It's outside of their experience. It's not something they really understand. It is very black and very urban, and people are scared of that. In stores like this one in Harlem, rap music sells hundreds of thousands of records, and hits like those produced by the Sugar Hill record label sell millions. Showdown, the latest Sugar Hill release, pits the gang against the Furious Five in verbal combat. Rap also inspires physical competition. This is called breakdancing, or breaking. Like rapping, it's a competitive display of style. Dance as a form of ritual warfare, as the breakers, in this case the rock steady crew, try to outdo each other. Competitions between rival groups of breakers have occasionally been misinterpreted by the authorities as gang warfare. It was in January in 1980. We got a call. It was a riot in progress at a subway station. They sent my people. They had. They came back with about 37 youths. And in interviewing the kids, we found the word we were rocking coming up an awful lot. We wanted to find out if this, what kind of a riot was going on. Uh, we found out in the long run that it was a dance competition, and we started some of the kids dancing at that time in the police station. I said a hip hop, the hip it, the hip it. Because young kids have shown the ability to memorize complex raps that last up to 16 minutes, rap is being brought into classrooms as a teaching tool in Philadelphia, New York, and Washington, D.C. These students are generally, many of them, not turned on to learn. And I think that they see themselves as very successful, which can only breed something good. I'm the best in the world. You could bet on that. I'm the One-time rapping DJ Jocko Henderson has developed an educational program using rap. Rap can be used to teach history. For example, the Declaration of Independence is the right to stand on your own. The country wants to walk instead of crawl, make decisions all alone. America, America is about to be born, you see. The persuasive power of rap has even been utilized to motivate voters in the Boston area. Rap has its satirists as well. This preppy rap was seen recently on Tom Snyder's Tomorrow Show. I live on the Upper East Side in a townhouse with a staff. I got a living maid, a butler and valet who lays out my clothes and draws a bath. Even English hard rock groups like The Clash are beginning to add rap songs to their act. Well, it's not a black music phenomenon. We've had records that have been number one in countries throughout the world where there's no black folks, okay? There's uh, nothing but white folks in Poland and, and uh, South America, Europe. Come on, everybody, mark this space. Rap is likely to influence popular music for years to come. It has tremendous staying power because it lets ordinary people express ideas they care about in language they can relate to, put to music they can dance to. Not everyone can sing, but anyone can rap. Uh, rock on, don't stop.